the country is a geological pressure valve where planet Earth lets off steam. It's a spectacular landscape of geysers, bubbling mud pools and the world's biggest hot springs. The result of all this geological mayhem is a pristine, beautiful country that defines the national character. To the average New Zealander, climate change must seem a remote concern. But now their Prime Minister is urging them to kick the carbon habit, to become carbon neutral and reduce their net greenhouse gas emissions to zero. What inspired me to go out and challenge New Zealanders to help us become a carbon neutral nation and to be truly sustainable was that if the world doesn't tackle this problem comprehensively, we're not going to be bequeathing much of a planet to future generations. The government's targets include energy. 90% must come from renewable sources by 2025. Our power consumption is going up each year. We need to look at more ways of generating power. Transport. Emissions to be cut 50% by 2040. They need cleaner cars, even electric cars. New Zealand is the fifth worst for greenhouse gas emissions per capita. And we can't blame that purely on our sheep and cows. Curbing farmyard emissions by 2013 has already led farmers to protest outside Parliament against the so-called fart tax. We're showing the government something, aren't we? Aye? Across the road from Parliament, the backbencher is a pub where they serve fish and chips and a drink to politicians, journalists and political cartoonists. Politicians don't agree about much, but when it comes to the environment, even the opposition goes along with Helen Clark. They just don't think she's delivering. While the talk has been great, the walk simply hasn't been there. A little bit less rhetoric and a lot more action is what New Zealanders need to see if we're going to live up to that clean green mantra. To see what carbon neutral means, you can start in the heart of New Zealand's wine country, where a local company achieved a world first. Grove Mill was in actual fact the, the first company in the world to, to actually have a product uh, certified um, as being carbon zero. And why did we do it? Well, there were no simple answer. We did it for a range of reasons. Uh, we were very environmentally conscious anyway. We still are. It's the most significant environmental impact man is having on this planet um, and we, fo we focused on that and we put the project in place. Step one was measuring. They measured their emissions and then cut back or reduced where they could. We used to fly helicopters over this vineyard for frost protection. It's extremely high in carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, this cuts it by probably about 90%. Step two was mitigating. Making their wine bottles lighter meant they needed less energy to make glass and less fuel for transport. Instead of air conditioning, this wine cellar is insulated. To keep it cool, computerized fans suck in cold air at night. But the vineyard could not eliminate trucks or shipping from the process. But they also have offsets, i.e. they do plant trees to balance off uh, the carbon that they are actually producing. So step three meant offsetting. In other words, planting trees or bushes because they can absorb carbon released into the atmosphere. Grove Mills believed their carbon neutral status was a positive selling point and circulated a film to news agencies everywhere. But they were ahead of their time. We were very pleased with the, uh, with the, with the work we'd done, but uh, the world didn't seem to be at the time. What happened? There was a degree of resounding silence. Deafening um, silence? Deafening, deafening silence. silence. It wasn't long before the world began to take climate change seriously. Climate change became mainstream and people bought into it, governments bought into it. Yeah, the Stern Report and um, 
Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth. They, they were the two big ones. And, and we'd sent out video to uh, news agencies all around the world. And I think that they had filed it in the bin. And then about two months later, I think they were rummaging in the bin looking for somebody who had some footage. And they found us. Unless they recycled, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Now the rest of New Zealand is trying to catch up with Grove Mill. Jeanette Fitzsimons is co-leader of the world's oldest Green Party. Her house shows she does not just talk the talk, she walks the walk. It is built from a local timber that needs no treatment. Power comes from solar panels when it's sunny and a micro-hydro when it rains. As a member of the government's coalition, it is Fitzsimons' job to make sure the country hits its targets for renewable energy. New Zealand has a lot of natural advantages. Our electricity system is nearly 70% renewable now, mainly from hydro, but with some geothermal and increasingly a little bit of wind. One of the government's main goals is to increase supplies of renewable energy. into underground volcanic heat, geothermal power plants can generate almost limitless clean power. Rivers, rapids and waterfalls are also an abundant source of hydroelectricity. The government aims to increase the supply of renewable energy up from 70%. We have a goal, um, a government goal, to raise that to 90% renewable by 2025. That's something I do really praise the government for. It's an achievable goal. The government wants wind farms to make up the 20% shortfall. But it faces opposition. 